My name is David Kennedy. I'm the owner and lead designer for Lewis Creative Media. And I'm currently working with a church where I live here in Hobart, Indiana, my church, the church I attend, um, on our live stream. And this is something that has been in the mix for a little while, but it's something that because of the current pandemic situation uh, that we're having to kind of lean on a lot more as most churches are in this time period. So I wanted to talk a little bit give a quick tech tour, talk a little bit about the technology and how we're expediting, no, how we're implementing live stream into our facility <clears throat> here at the Rock Church. So first of all, let me go over some of the particular products that we are using that have been tremendously helpful to get us going. Um, first, um, they break down into three different categories here. So we've got extenders, cabling, and capture cards. So let me explain what that is. Let me start with capture cards. This right here is the Avermedia Live Gamer Mini capture card. This is about a hundred bucks that you can get on Amazon. You can get it on newegg.com. And this is absolutely essential for our operations. Now you may have a different way to do it or you may have heard of a different way to do it. No way is wrong in my opinion. You may even have a camera that you can hook up via USB, and that might work perfectly for you. Unfortunately for us, the cameras that we had to use, uh, have to use, I should say, don't have the ability to go and stream directly through USB. So we went and we got two of these particular devices, not two identical ones. We got one from one place, one from another. They're different. It doesn't make any difference what they are. They all do the same thing. Basically what it does is it takes the video output, whether that be in this case, HDMI, and it converts it into a USB signal that you then plug into your computer and it will read that HDMI input as like a webcam, okay? So first things first, we have two of these because we're running a two camera system here. The second thing that we did, um, we're running ours through our media computer. Um, and I'll show you a little bit around our kind of setup here in a minute. Um, to kind of give you an idea, but we're running ours through our, our media computer, the computer that runs our screens for our regular services, which is great because that means that it's one computer and one operator, and you don't have to worry about all of this excess and, and exasperated team size and all this other stuff, and especially in this, cons uh, this situation since you're limited to the number of people that you can have on campus at one time. So what we've done is we have decided to extend our cameras into certain positions and then lock their focal length at a certain position so that we've got interest point angles, but we don't necessarily have to have an operator on every camera. This created a bit of a problem because we originally were going to extend our output for our uh, projectors to a place closer to the center of the sanctuary and then output from our cameras on a short cable. Uh, however, that didn't end up working out. Um, so what we ended up doing instead was taking the same technology essentially and using it on the inverse. So what we did was, let me show you, I've got a couple of different versions here. We used HDMI over ethernet extension devices, kits. So what this does is this takes your HDMI from your camera out into this device, connects via ethernet, and then outputs that signal again to HDMI, which works really well for us because then that HDMI goes out to the capture card and converts to USB, and then we place that on the computer into our switcher. I wasn't sure at first whether this was gonna work. I was a little skeptical because I've only ever used these devices to extend an HDMI output or for example, a projection output to a screen. We in fact have this exact brand running our main screens for our platform for lyrics and other things. But we had this extra one and I thought I would give it a try and it actually works perfectly. So what we did was we bought another one. This is a different brand. This is Sarbent, I believe, Sabrent. This is a Sabrent version. This is another uh, component does the exact same thing. It's a little bit different, um, and I'll explain the differences. First of all, there's a bit of a difference in cost, quite a bit, actually. This uh, Ori, I believe, O-R-E-I brand is about $115 for this one-to-one -one unit. 
it is very robust, works very well, and it can work for up to 300 feet. At least that's the way it's touted to work. You'd have to cut your own custom cables to run that far, and we haven't quite gotten to that point yet, but we may eventually get to that point if we need to. But for now, it works perfectly, and we already had it on hand, but our budget was a little bit tight, so we couldn't just go and buy another one of these. So how do we fix that? Well, we look for a cheaper option. What we found was this Sabrent version from Newegg. This was about $40, uh, quite a bit of a difference. Um, and it's a little bit smaller, but there's only one caveat, and that caveat, well, there's one positive and one negative. The first, the positive, is that on the Ori model, each one of these components has a power supply, meaning that no matter where you go, no matter how far you run, you're gonna have to have a power supply at each point. Not a huge deal. We've got an extension cable that runs all the way to that camera's uh, spot. It's only about 25 feet from our actual switcher unit, so it's not a huge deal for us. But if you were gonna be running it for a longer distance, it may make a bigger deal. If you're gonna be in a situation like what we used the other component like that for, it was a little bit of a, a situation because we needed one that was power over ethernet. And we ended up getting the different model that had that because our projectors are up in the ceiling and they don't necessarily have ready access to power that for that many plugs. So that's one way that this cheaper model, other than the price, is actually a little bit nicer because only one of these, and I think it's only the receiver unit, is the only one that needs power. And it comes with the power adapter, nice long cable, it's very nice, um, but only one needs power, which is perfect because in this particular instance, we only are sending, we're sending from our camera to our computers. Our computer area is gonna have the power capabilities to plug this in. If we were to have to have a power supply for this unit at the camera, we'd have to run another extension cord to that camera and plug it in. This is actually pretty nice because we don't have to worry about that. Now, the caveat that I mentioned earlier is between the two, the Ori brand only needs one ethernet cable per coupling. From here to here, one ethernet cable, that's all you have to do. On the other brand, it actually needs two. Why that is, I'm not 100% sure. When you look at the actual inputs, it says video and DDC. I don't really know what that means. I haven't done the research. I probably should have, but I didn't. So when you look at the difference between the two, you're looking at the difference of the cost really primarily. Um, you're looking at 115 for this unit and 40 for this unit. That cost alone, I think, more than justifies the need for the extra cable for this lower qual or this lower cost unit. However, it's at your discretion if it's something that you would decide you wanted to do. So what we did, moving on, uh, oh, the third thing was cabling. Uh, we ended up using a, um, just a, we have a Sony PXW X70 um, camcorder from Sony. It's very, very nice, shoots high def, it looks very good. Uh, and that's the one we've been using for quite a while. That camera we were blessed with because it has an HDMI, full HDMI, regular size, full size, whatever, output. So to go into our capture card or into our ethernet extension cable, it was simple as getting you know a cable similar to what was in this package, which is just a regular HDMI cable. And we were able to run straight from the camera into the extender, from the extender to the other end of the extender, out to the capture card, and then into the computer. Now, we, we have another camera that does the exact same thing, has the exact same outputs, but it was not functional at the moment we're getting it repaired, uh, which could take some time. So in the meantime, I personally own a Canon EOS RP uh, full frame digital camera, which is a great camera. This is my full endorsement of that camera. I think it's fantastic for the price point. Uh, so it has a mini HDMI output on it. Mini HDMI, if you're not aware, is smaller, hence the name mini, and doesn't immediately convert to HDMI. You have to get a specialty cable or a specialty converter to make that happen. The camera itself did not come with anything like that. However, the camera's settings inside of it does offer an output that is full HD or even up to 4K 
that is clean, meaning it doesn't have any of the uh, settings and all those different things that you would normally see on your live view on your camera, none of those would show up on that output. So what I decided to do was I had to go down and get a specialty cable. I got one of these. This is an Insignia HDMI mini to HDMI full conversion cable. It does from the smaller one here to the larger one here. This is really nice. This was 15 bucks at Best Buy. So what that ended up enabling me to do was I run this cable from my camera out to the ethernet HDMI extension, out from that into the capture card. I pull it into the program that we use, which I'll talk about in another video. And what it does is it converts it into a uh, USB signal, and then I can pull it in as a webcam. Now, what we've got is we have camera one, which is the Sony, camera two, which is the Canon, both running in as separate video inputs. And then in our switcher program, I'll switch back and forth. I'll add lower thirds, etc. So that's the tech tour kind of by the product. But let me go ahead and give you a quick rundown uh, of how this actually looks and the implementation of it in our church. So for this portion of the video, I'm not gonna be on screen because you don't need to look at me, you need to look at the technology. So I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna show you what we have going on here. So this is our first, pardon the uh, gimbal that's in the shot there, but this is our first camera. This is our Sony PXWX70. This is a great camera. And as you can see here on the back, this has regular HDMI full output, which is great. So what we've done is we've run an HDMI cable out and that comes down here to our ethernet extension. We connect a cable there and I have all this kind of gaffed up so that it doesn't fall and damage any of our cables or any of our inputs or outputs. And that runs down. And this is what I was talking about earlier. This has the power supply requirement. So I've just run that in, gaffed it down, and then I've got that connected down here at the floor. That ethernet cable runs down across the floor. Pardon the mess, it's a bit of a disaster in here right now. It runs up, and then we have it connect into this other unit. This is your ethernet cable coming in, HDMI comes out, and you can probably see it. This component here, the silver box, is the other brand of capture card that we use. We got that one from Sweetwater. Very, very nice unit. Works excellently, plug and play instantly worked. Uh, it was about $220 to get that one. Then, our second camera is my Canon EOS RP. This is a fantastic camera. Love it. I've shot with it for about a year now. And it just puts out great image quality, great video quality. And knowing now that it does actually have a full HD or full 4K clean output through this mini HDMI port, I went ahead and switched it to that. I've got my settings here. As you can see, I've got it set to our video output. And basically what I do here is I've got this converting from mini HDMI out to HDMI. It goes into this first sender unit, which is the one that does not need power, if you, were, if you recall from the earlier part of the video. And then as you can see here, I've got two cables, two ethernet cables that I bought from Menards. Uh, they were about eight bucks a piece and they're 25 feet, pre-terminated, good working cables. So then I take those and I run them down across the floor in a pair, run them up the wall, and then I run them into the receiver unit. Now, the interesting thing that I forgot to mention earlier is these actually do work power over ethernet. I didn't realize this until I hooked it up and it started working without having the power supply connected. The power supply is supposed to connect to this side here. You can't see it because it's covered with gaff tape, but it works from this. So whenever I hooked this in to the camera with both uh, cables here, I hooked up the um, HDMI cable and I hooked it into the other capture card, which is this component here. When I hooked it up and then had USB hooked into the computer, 
it actually powered this unit and I didn't actually have to do anything with it other than that. So that's basically the gist of our technology and how it's run here. Now, I do have a couple of other components that I'll get into in the next video uh, because I wanna go through what we use as far as getting audio. In fact, I'm gonna go through the audio here in a second, but I'm gonna go through in the next video how we actually compile all of these feeds, whether video or audio, into a single video output. There's a really great program that we use. I'm not sponsored by them that I'll talk about in the next video, and that is Wirecast. And um, I'll talk about that in the next video, and I think you're gonna like it. So um, let me give you a quick rundown of how we have our audio running, and uh, then we'll call it a day. This is, we're running our entire broadcast and our media outputs that puts out to these screens over here, all from the same computer. Now, do I recommend that you run your media outputs and your live stream through the same computer? Absolutely not. This was just the way that we did it in a pinch to get things going, and it actually works pretty well. It does put a bit heavier of a strain on this computer than we probably should, but overall, it is functioning and it's getting us through this time of live only church. Um, so, a couple of things here. We run Wirecast software on here, which I'll show in the next video, um, but we're also running both cameras. We've got camera one there and camera two down here. We're running them both into this computer via USB capture cards. However, as you probably noticed and maybe you have thought about or pointed out in the last portion of the video, neither of those cameras are receiving or outputting audio. And we don't want them to because if they're putting audio into the system, it's going to be audio from their independent microphones. Neither of those microphones are going to be very good. So how do we get around that? That's what this beautiful device here is for. This is a USB audio interface. This is the Behringer UMC404HD. This is about $100, $120 on Amazon. I have used this for podcasting, for recording, all kinds of different things, and it is an awesome unit. It's plug and play, power over ethernet. There's no need for a power supply. It's incredible. Not power over ethernet, I don't know why I said that. Anyway, so what we've got here is, as you can probably tell, we have this one line that comes into it, and then this feeds directly into our computer. This line comes from this beauty. This is the Behringer X32. This is our main house board. This is a very common, very popular sound um, controller console for churches the world over, as far as I'm aware. And what's nice is it's got 16 independently mixable and assignable buses. So what we have done, and I'll explain all that and maybe in another video if it's requested. What we've done is we've set this up with a custom bus mix for our broadcast, meaning that what we have mixed for our house speakers up here is not impacted by the mix and vice versa that we have sending out to our broadcast. So we have it custom mixed so that everything's balanced the way that it should be for the broadcast. It's custom uh, compressed, meaning that the loud spots on the top and the quiet spots at the bottom are all smushed together to be a little bit more easy to comprehend and process, and you can hear everything on the broadcast. And then that compressed and mixed custom output sends all the way through this cable over here and ends up in this, which then comes back into this computer. So one thing that we have suffered with a little bit, and it'll be something that we address going forward, is there is a delay in the audio. The reality is, is that when you have a direct feed coming into the computer from audio, there is almost no latency, or at least very little latency and delay of any kind. However, it's come to my attention recently that there is a, not a significant delay, but an actual definite delay in video from HDMI. And I'm not completely convinced that it doesn't amplify that delay a little bit that we're running it through ethernet extensions. So what do we have to do to fix that? In the program, which I'll show you on the next video, we actually have the ability to delay the audio by a certain portion to match the video. And we're gonna have to work on that. It's something that we're gonna have to kind of fine tune and, and you know fix as we go. Um, but we can show you in the next video exactly how that's gonna come about and exactly how that's gonna work. 
Uh, but for now, that gives you a bit of a tech rundown of how we have things going on here at the Rock Church. Um, again, my name is David. I operate and own Lewis Creative Media, and this is something that we do. I have put this video together to show you how we've been able to kind of get things up and running in a, just a quick and budget conscious option. Uh, and if this is something that benefits us, I think it could benefit you. And if it's something that you're interested in talking with me about to see if something that I can help you with or get your church going with, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can find my information further at www.lewiscrtv.com. I'm going to put that on the screen right here. So just take a look at my website. I have plenty of options and things that I can help you and your church and your business with. And this is just the latest addition to that repertoire. So take a look, take a listen, and uh, chime in for the next video where we're going to talk a little bit more about the program that I'm using here, Wirecast, not a sponsor. Uh, actually, none of the products that we have been showcasing on this video have been sponsored products. They're all things that I have found that work really well for this application, and it could be something beneficial for you. If that's the case, don't hesitate to reach out to me. In the meantime, we'll see you on the next video.